so my name is Waif and today I am going to be making another video for you all. It's been a while since I've posted, I've been pretty busy with school and everything, but recently a lot of people have been DMing me on Instagram and asking me questions about how I like UCSC, just like general questions about the campus in general, and so I thought I would make another video for all of you prospective students out there who've maybe been admitted to UCSC and are now trying to decide if you want to go there or not. And because of coronavirus, of course, people are not able to visit colleges. And just remembering back to when I was deciding where to go, um, being able to tour the college and talk to students who currently attended the colleges that I was interested in was like the major way that I ultimately chose where I wanted to go to school. And so I definitely feel for all of you who are having to make that decision without really being able to attend colleges and talk to people in the same way. Like I said, I've already gotten a lot of messages from various people asking these questions. So I just kind of compiled um, a list of the questions that I've been most commonly asked and tried to answer them all in this video because hopefully if you're out there and you're considering UC Santa Cruz then maybe this can help you uh, make the choice of whether or not you want to go there. So without further ado let's get into the rest of the video. Also the lighting is kind of weird in here but we're just gonna try and make it work. So kind of I would say the most general and common question that I've gotten is how did I choose to go to UC Santa Cruz? I really like this question because obviously this is a decision that all of you are trying to make but it's also probably the most difficult one for me to answer because I honestly like cannot even remember myself senior year of high school which wasn't that long ago, it was three years. Um, but it's really hard for me to like give an answer that was purely based on like when I was in high school how I decided to go to Santa Cruz versus why I think it's a good school and like why I enjoy going there now. Um, but I'm going to try and like differentiate between those things and the answer that I give. The main reason that I chose UCSC was honestly because of the natural beauty of both the campus and the college town. And I know that might sound like a really weird decision to base where I went to school off of but I know for me that the environment that I'm in and like surrounded by really affects like my mood and my like work ethic and kind of everything and just like general happiness. I really like being out in nature, I love the beach um, and that is tied to like my interests and my major um, in marine bio. And so because of that I knew that I really wanted to go to school in a beach town and just somewhere that I would have a lot of access to being out in nature and enjoying it and that's definitely what UCSC is and of the schools that I applied to and got into I felt like it was one of the best options in terms of like meeting that requirement for me so that was one of the major reasons that I chose UCSC and then the final reason that I chose to attend UCSC was because of the research opportunities that I felt like it would be able to present me with um, UCs in general are known for being areas where undergraduate students are able to get involved in research fairly easily and I have found that to be very true from my experience and with a lot of my friends. I know tons of people who are involved in research, whether it be working more regularly in like a research lab on campus or through smaller projects or internships that they've involved themselves in throughout their time at UCSC and um, that's something that I was really adamant about being able to do um, in terms of just like my personal interests and career goals and I definitely found that once I got to UCSC that was very true um, and I have had a lot of opportunities to be involved in research. And so this also kind of goes along with another question that I've been receiving a lot which is what is the campus culture at UCSC? So I would say that UC Santa Cruz is pretty distinct from a lot of other colleges in terms of its campus culture. A lot of colleges have a really big emphasis on like football games and kind of sports in general and then also on Greek life, so sororities and fraternities. And so UCSC has sports obviously and also does have sororities and frats, but neither of those things I would say are a huge huge part of campus culture. We don't have a football team so we don't have like game days and I wouldn't say that there's a huge amount of school spirit around sports in general. That said like there's obviously people who play the different sports and like represent UCSC but it's just like not campus life and culture isn't centered around that in the way that it is at some other schools and I'm in no way like saying that um that's like a good or bad thing. That's really your preference. Um to me I'm not super 
I didn't really want that, I guess, out of college. I wasn't really looking for that experience. And then also Greek life is sort of the same thing um, that definitely is present on campus, but I would say that the majority of students are not involved in it. Um, obviously, I know people who are, um, and just like any school, like it's definitely a way to be social and to make friends, but the majority of the student body isn't involved in it. Again, that appealed to me because I didn't want to be involved in Greek life, and some schools, if you're not involved in it, it can be a lot more difficult socially. Um, and so I wanted to go somewhere where I knew that like either if you are involved in Greek life or you aren't involved in Greek life, it doesn't really matter. Like you'll still be able to find friends and like have a good experience. Another thing kind of going along with UCSC not being like traditional in the campus, college campus sense is just the way that it's arranged and laid out. We have 10 residential colleges and that is where you'll most likely live um, in one of those your first and most likely second years. Um, and so each one of those colleges has a theme and um, you take like different classes um, related to that theme. Um, and I've talked about this a little bit more in depth in other uh, videos, but I really liked that idea because you get to live with people who have similar interests to you and um, also like the colleges are located in different spots around campus so you can kind of like choose like if you want to live more in the woods there's colleges that are located in like upper campus area um, and then if you want to be more like in the sun or like close to like the field or like the gym there's colleges that you can uh, live in for that so they're kind of like different ways to like have sort of a different experience um, more catered to what you would prefer um, based off of just where you live at UCSC which I thought was really different and kind of interesting and it also creates like these tighter knit communities you'll befriend a lot of people within your college which I personally really liked so like I've talked about already I think that the campus is really naturally beautiful there's so many different hiking trails um, there's access to the beach and just in general like your walk to class is a really pretty walk to class and I just personally really enjoy that I think being out in nature and are surrounded by it is just a really good way to get your mind off of um, anything that's like troubling you and I just found it to really help with like the general adjustment period of like first coming to college. I also think that within my major and my department, so marine biology or like the ecology and evolutionary biology department, um, it just has a really solid program, really good professors. I've had really great experiences in all the classes that I've taken for my major so far. I've been able to get involved in research um, and I just generally really like all of the opportunities I've had through that program and um, I just feel like it's a good one for what I want to do. In addition to that, just in general, I really love the attitude of the majority of students and faculty um, here. And also like people are very supportive of each other. And once again, like this obviously people are going to have very different perspectives on this, but I just feel like I very quickly found like friends and um, faculty members who just like were very supportive of me and who I just like felt very like at ease around and at ease with. Um, and honestly, like, I feel like where I went to high school is, like, very competitive and kind of an unhealthy environment in a lot of ways, like, academically, and I just feel like people here seem to, like, genuinely care a lot more about one another, which is really refreshing, uh, to see. The main thing that I wanted to talk about was um, I think if any of you are seriously considering UCSC, you've probably heard about the um, graduate student strike uh, that started um, like started this end of December of like 2019, but like really like got in more like. I guess grew and like actually became a true strike in February of this year and so what I just like is I guess how the UC uh, deals with strikes because this isn't the first one that we've had this is the first like graduate student one but we have had other ones in the past and what I mean by that is for one thing like uh, people are striking for basic needs and like because they can't afford to live in the place where they're working um, and the school just generally I feel like does not uh, allocate its money in the best way in terms of like the administration versus um, like its workers but then in addition to that I also don't think that the UC system does a good job of making sure that students like undergraduate students um, are not negative negatively affected um, by things like this and I think a lot of people turn to like blaming the strikers but 
I think that there also needs to be attention on administration. But this is definitely something you can look up. Again, I don't want to go into a ton of detail on it just because I think it's a pretty controversial topic and I don't want to like speak for any different groups, but I just think that the way it's been handled by the UC system is not good. And um, it definitely like has been something that affected my academic or just like my experience winter quarter and a lot of students experiences in general. And so I lived on campus for two years and for everyone who was in my year or older, we had two years of guaranteed housing on campus and then after that you're not guaranteed so usually you would find housing off campus. But I don't know how that might change as like the population of UCSC grows but that was what it was for me. So my first year I lived in the dorms and I went with a random like roommate pairing experience so I just like filled out the form online and then got paired with two roommates. I lived in a triple. And in terms of like my roommates, I had a really good experience. Um, I felt like they paired us really well and I just in general like got along with them really great. So that was nice. Um, and I liked my room. I lived at Rachel Carson College both years um, and everything was like pretty nice. Um, I would say that it's expensive and that's again something that is going to be true like for most places that I feel like you're looking at now, but for living in a triple, I will say it was really small. And then my second year, I lived in the apartments um, on campus at Rachel Carson, and I lived with four of my really good friends. I was in a triple again, so I had two other roommates, and then my two other friends both had singles in the apartment, and that was really great, because I did not get a meal plan that year. I just cooked for myself in the apartment, because those do have a kitchen and it was great. It was also like way, way bigger, um, both the room and the apartment than like the triple that I lived in my freshman year. Overall, I would say living on campus, I think people sometimes like to complain about it because like, of course you have an RA and you might be living around people or with people that you're not, you don't get along that well with. I will say though that living off campus also has a lot of other challenges and like just more responsibility that comes with it. So I think you do kind of take it for granted a little bit. I didn't personally experience any like major issues with like things breaking or like plumbing or anything like that but I have friends who like definitely had kind of like major issues like one of my friends my second year in the apartments their um, building basically flooded and so they had to like move out for several weeks and like while well, that was handled but I think that really just is a very like case-by-case -case thing I can't really say for sure like how your experience with that will be you the UC campus is somewhat old and like a lot there are some newer colleges like 9 and 10 are pretty new but a lot of the other ones and I think Merrill just got redone, um, but a lot of the other ones are older, so like there are going to be issues that present themselves like that. Um, but I will say that the nice thing is that you're not like paying extra to get any of that fixed. It just is like you already pay to live there, and so they will try to like accommodate you as best they can. But it is something to keep in mind. It's not like the newest housing uh, out there. Another question that I've gotten is, what activities are there to do off campus? So I think Santa Cruz has a lot of different things that you can do for fun. Again, I've said this so many times throughout this video already, but just like the nature that you are surrounded by and like your access to the beach and hiking trails and everything is a huge one. I would say if you're not a very outdoorsy person, there's still stuff to do in Santa Cruz, but it is very much geared, I would say, towards that lifestyle in a lot of ways. So I love to go to the beach, I love to go hiking, um, and in addition to like in Santa Cruz and on campus, there's a lot of really cool um, places in Monterey, which is about an hour south of Santa Cruz. There's really good snorkeling and scuba diving there, um, and then also um, in Capitola, there's beaches as well, which is a little bit south of Santa Cruz, just like the next town over. And then um, if you also go north up Highway 1, which would um, take you like the opposite direction there's also a lot of beaches and hiking and stuff up that way so there's just a lot of opportunities for that and then in general like on a more like day-to-day -day or like weekend to weekend basis a lot of students including myself would go downtown um, downtown Santa Cruz has lots of restaurants there's like some retail stores stuff like that so like if you just kind of want to shop with your friends or go out for food that's a pretty popular place to go one of my favorite places to go like walk or take pictures is West Cliff Drive which is just a like five mile road that goes from like above like where the boardwalk is or like Cowell Beach um, to natural bridges and it's just a really pretty walk once people go for runs there um, I do that and just walks and take pictures things like that you're pretty close 
close to San Jose. It's like 45 minute drive north and then like an hour and a half to San Francisco. I'm from the Bay Area, so I'm not, I don't usually go there that much because that's where I live. Um, but if you aren't from there or if you really like it, it's a pretty easy drive. One question I got is, is it popular to study abroad? Um, we do have the UC study abroad program. I have a, f a couple friends who have done that. Um, I will say I don't think it's as popular as at some schools, but I think it also really depends on your major. Um, it was not something that really interested me that much. It can be like somewhat expensive and kind of just like a whole thing to figure out with like transferring credits. But um, if you're interested, there definitely are programs. Um, I would just honestly like look into that if it's something that you're like highly prioritizing because it does depend a lot on your major. One of the questions I got was what did you struggle most with your freshman year? Obviously this answer is gonna like vary a lot from person to person but I just thought I would touch on it. As a freshman I had a lot of free time and I think that's pretty typical. Your classes just aren't as hard and you're probably not going to be involved in as many things and I think because of that even if you are a very social person I feel like there are times that you might just feel a little bit more lonely because you just don't have something occupying you at all times and you're still kind of making those like close friends and like building those relationships and so I think for me at like the first quarter and a half there was definitely a lot of times where I would just feel kind of lonely and like wasn't used to like doing things by myself um, as much or like I think also just having to really put in the effort to like form those relationships and like ask people like do you want to hang out and stuff like that when before you know coming from high school when you have your like friend group it can be a lot easier I guess um, and so I think like it took me a little bit of while to realize like you do have to kind of put yourself out there in terms of like finding friends and also just like opening yourself up to different opportunities um, and once you do it's just a lot more fun. Another question that I got is are the hours of um, like your gym, dining hall, and library convenient for students? So obviously this is just my opinion on it. Um, I think for the most part they're okay but there definitely are some things that I kind of like wish I had known about earlier it's not so much that like I'm super inconvenienced by it but there was a lot of hours that I like didn't really know until I showed up somewhere and it like wasn't open um, and that could just be me like not bothering to to look into it something that I know can be kind of surprising we don't have a 24-hour library and like most other schools I guess do um, we have two main libraries um, the science and engineering library and then McHenry um, and they're open like I don't know the exact hours but it's around like 8 a.m. to midnight or like 8 to like 2 or so kind of depending on like which one and like the time they extend their hours during like um, the week before finals and like finals week um, and then on weekends they open later they open at like 10 and then they close earlier I think at like 7 and so I definitely will say like there's been times especially the earlier closing on the weekends I've like been working on a paper or something and then it's like oh it's closing but it's also not that big of an inconvenience like you can always work on it somewhere else um, and I guess most people probably aren't spending their Saturdays at the library so like you know there's also that uh, but for the most part I think it's pretty good. I also am someone who is an early riser and so I on the weekends would love to like get work done like start working before 10 and so sometimes I would be annoyed that the library wasn't open earlier especially because like if my roommates were like still asleep I'm not gonna like do work in our room um, and so I wanted to like find somewhere that I could go work and like usually that wasn't the library which was kind of annoying but I also know that a lot of people like don't get up that early on the weekends. Dining halls also the hours vary quite a bit depending on which one and like what day of the week it is. Um, Sunday through Thursday they're open from like 6 to 11 or something like that like pretty substantial and then on the weekends um, some dining halls are actually completely closed which I do think is pretty inconvenient. I never lived at a college where like my dining hall was closed so I could always still like go but um, I had friends who lived at colleges where their dining halls were closed and so they would have to go to like the next college over for their food which I would say is kind of an inconvenience especially when you're paying quite a bit for like your meal plan so yeah that was definitely something that I didn't like and then on the weekends there they close a lot earlier and they open later um, and I also know that that's because like the people who work there are students um, a lot of students work in the dining hall so they have to have hours that like accommodate those students schedules too but that is something to keep in mind and then the last thing on that list was our gym the gym hours I would say are pretty good on weekdays it's like 6 30 to like 11 30 or midnight which is honestly pretty good and then again the weekends they open later if you're someone who likes to exercise earlier in the morning they don't open until like 10 
which again, I didn't really love, but again, lots of people, that's not when they exercise, so it's not a big deal. And then the last question that I wanted to answer today was, is a car necessary? Um, and so I would say for your first year, do not bring a car. Freshmen are not allowed to have cars on campus or like you can't, sorry, let me rephrase that. You can have a car, but you can't have a parking permit. And so there's nowhere for you to park your car during the weekdays. And then on weekends, you can park your car. It's like starting um, at 5 p.m. every, actually every day starting at 5 p.m. you can park without a parking permit in the remote lots. Um, and then starting on Fridays, um, Friday nights after 8.30, you can park like pretty much anywhere on campus um, for free. And then the weekends, you can park again pretty much anywhere for free on campus, which is nice. So for my second year, I did have a car um, and it was really nice because I was like doing more. I was also having to go grocery shopping and stuff like that. And so it worked out well because I would park my car on campus on the weekends. And that was when I was like using it the most anyway. And then on um, weekdays, I actually parked it at my friend's house off campus so that I didn't have to pay because there is a lot of areas of Santa Cruz that you need to have a permit to park like in town um, in addition to on campus so I will say like don't just bring a car like do your research and make sure you can like park it somewhere when you're not using it um, if you're not going to buy a parking permit because they're pretty expensive and you aren't able to get them as first years and then going back to the like your first year I would just say you don't need a car um, because you don't have to like go grocery shopping because you have to get a meal plan if you live on the dorms um, there's not really like that requirement to be like bringing a bunch of groceries back on the bus and the buses generally like take you the main places that you need to go downtown to like main beaches near grocery stores that wasn't really an issue the only thing you really like might want a car for is like going on like farther trips and again like I feel like it's more worth it to just use Zipcar or like Uber rather than like deal with kind of having a car your first year when you can't really use it that much in general and then um, this would be something that most of you wouldn't be thinking about um, until later but if you do live off campus or when you live off campus um, then it really varies like if you don't live near a bus line having a car is pretty essential um, and even if you do it can just kind of be nice in terms of like running errands and stuff like that um, but I would just say like your first year is you're not involved in that much stuff yet and you don't have to go grocery shopping and stuff regularly you really don't need a car and it's kind of a hassle to figure out like where you would be putting it so sorry the sun is shining like across my face here but anyway um, thank you all so much for watching this video and I hope this video was helpful for those of you who are considering UCSC and answered some of your questions um, I would love to make another video like this so if you have more questions feel free to comment below or you can um, DM me on Instagram as many of you have been doing. So I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy and I will see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!